concentration of solutions. Okay, so we know that a solution is formed when you mix a solute or dissolve a solute into a solvent. A solution is you getting a solute and dissolving it into a solvent. Okay, so solute is dissolved, solvent does the dissolving. Okay. Concentration is the amount of solute per quantity of solvent. So we're dissolving a solute into a solvent. Phenol is a very volatile chemical. Okay? High concentration of phenol can actually kill you. But if you look at certain medications, okay, uh, like certain antiseptics, okay, um, certain disinfectants, you will find one of the medicinal ingredients is phenol. Okay? But at the right percentage, okay, the right concentration of it is actually beneficial. So low concentrations of phenol are components found in certain medicines like antiseptics or disinfectants. So it's really important that even though that it's got this hazardous property, that knowing what concentration to use can help you determine how much you know, of it can we use without it killing you, right? Because we look at these things, antiseptics, disinfectants, things to help you, okay? So concentrations as mass per volume percent. Chemists express concentrations of an unsaturated solution as a mass of solute dissolved per volume of solution. Okay? Similar yet different to solubility. So what we're looking at is what mass of solute, what mass are we going to dissolve in a specific volume of solution. And we have here what we call an unsaturated solution, So which means I have room to put more solute in if I want to but I'm not gonna put the maximum amount of salt. Okay. So a mass volume percent gives the mass of a solute dissolved in a volume of solution, and it's referred to in percent form. Okay. So mass per volume um, percent, or we might write it down as MV percent. Okay, mass per volume percent is equal to the mass of the solute, and these are very important to know. Make sure you know what units. Okay, we're using grams, and we're using milliliters for the volume. So if your question gives you uh, your answer in liters, make sure you convert liters to milliliters. Remember that there is, in one liter, there is how many milliliters? A thousand. Milliliters. Okay, so we're gonna have the mass of the solute divided by the volume of the solution. Now, there are there's another possibility uh, of using this is the method I personally prefer. Remember in stoichiometry we were looking at ratios. Okay, so mass per volume ratio we can write as a fraction as a mass over volume, right? To get percent, what do we always do with our, our number? E, multiply by 100. So what we're treating it as, this mass over volume, we're treating it as whatever the mass is, okay? So X mass in grams divided by 100 milliliters. Okay? So we're gonna do that and we're going to use that, and we're going to make that equal to this. And now, that might seem kind of a little messy here, but we'll see it in... Let's look at one of the first sample problems. A pharmacist adds 2.00 milliliters of distilled water to 4.00 grams of a powdered drug. The final volume of the solution is 3.00 milliliters. What is the concentration of the drug in grams per 100 milliliters of solution? What is the percent mass per volume percent of this solution. So let's start off with our uh, initial equation. So we have a mass per volume percent, which is equal to the mass of the solute divided by the volume of the solution times 
100 to give us a, an answer in 8%. So what is the mass of the solute? So we know that a pharmacist adds 2.0 milliliters of distilled water to 4.0 grams of a powdered drug. So we are dissolving a powdered drug into distilled water. So 4.00 grams of the powder divided by the volume of the solution and it says the, the final volume of the solution is, let's just erase that there so you can see it, 3.00 milliliters. So we have 3.00 milliliters and we're going to multiply it by 100 and our answer is going to equal to 133 percent or mass per volume so now this 100 percent can be written as follows 133 grams is going to be dissolved in 100 milliliters of solution. So if we divide these two, right, if we divide these two, we're going to get uh, 1.33, right, and when we convert this as a percent, we then multiply it by 100. So in other words, notice this 100 milliliters, we're always going to refer to it as in 100 milliliters, because that will also give us our percent. So 133% mass per volume is also equal to 133 grams is going to be dissolved in 100 milliliters of volume. So here's our mass, 133 grams. Here's our volume, 100 milliliters. And we're finding it in terms of a percent. Okay, so our answer that we get as a percent can also be related to grams per hundred. Okay. Next sample problem. Sample problem here. Many people use a solution of sodium phosphate and a 3PO4, commonly called TSP, to clean walls before putting up wallpaper. The recommended concentration is 1.7% mass per volume. What mass of TSP is needed to make 2.0 liters of solution? So, we know we have, our equation is mass volume percent. And our mass volume percent, as we said before, is mass of solute divided by the volume of solution times 100. So we are trying to find out what mass of TSP we are going to dissolve TSP so that TSP is our solute and when we dissolve it we get our final solution so we are trying to find it so what information are we given well we're given the mass volume percent which is 1.7 percent are we given the mass of the solute no and that so we're going to give it as x and we want our units in grams. We want our volume of the solution, and our volume of the solution is 2.0 liters. But 2.0 liters must be converted to milliliters. So 2,000 liters is equivalent to 2,000 milliliters. So we're going to divide it by 2,000 milliliters. So 2,000 milliliters times 1,000. So what we want to do is we want to isolate for this unknown here. So how do we do that? First step, what I like to do is bring this times 100 away from that side of the equal sign. So we want to bring it on this side. So because the function here is times 100, whenever I'm going to move it to this side of the uh, equal sign, it's going to become divide by 100. So 1.7 divided by 100. So notice here, this divided by 100. So in other words, I really have 1.7 grams per 100 
milliliters. But don't worry about that. That's really what it means. Okay, but that's not what we're gonna put in. Okay, we're just going to solve the equation. We're just gonna rearrange our equation. So we're given x grams, and we still have the 2,000 milliliters. So I still want to isolate for x, but now I want this 2,000, and I want to bring this over the equal sign. So when I bring it over the equal sign, the function here on this side is division. So when we move it to the other side, we are going to multiply. So when we multiply a number by a fraction, we are multiplying our numerator. So we're going to get 1.7 times 2,000 milliliters over 100. Okay. So when we do the following calculation, we are going to get, okay, so we have milliliters, we have grams, so milliliters cancel out, and we're given 34 grams. So in other words, we have 34 grams of TSP that we are gonna dissolve in this solution that we're gonna use to put up wallpaper. Concentration of a mass, mass percent. A mass, mass percent gives the mass of a solute divided by the mass of solution, expressed as a percent, referred to as the percent mass, mass. Okay. So here's the equation. Mass, mass percent is equal to mass of the solute in grams divided by the mass of the solution, also in grams. So mass, mass percent, mass, mass percent. And then we finally multiply by 100 to give us our percent. Let's look at a sample problem. Calcium chloride is used to melt ice on the road. To determine how much calcium chloride has been used, you take a sample of slush to analyze. So you take that sample, and that sample of slush with calcium chloride is 23.47 grams. When the solution was evaporated, so we're going to evaporate all the ice, and the residue that we're going to have left behind, and we're going to assume it as a pure solute, okay? we're going to assume that it was only ice water and calcium chloride. So the residue that I have left behind is 4.58 grams. What was the mass mass percent of calcium chloride in the slush, and then how many grams of calcium chloride were present in 100 grams of solution? So we start off with our equation. So mass mass percent is equal to the mass of solute in grams divided by the mass of solution. So we are dissolving a solute into a solvent to get our final solution and we're going to multiply it by 100. So what information are we given? So what was the mass of the solute? Well that's the residue that's left behind, 4.58 grams. Mass of the solution, 23.47 grams. We're going to multiply that. Then when we divide them by 100, and we're going to get 19.5% mass, mass. But now, 19.5%, okay, so that answers... That answers this part of the question. But then it asks, how many grams of calcium chloride? So all it is is get rid of this percent and rewrite it as 19.5. But instead of percent, it's 19.5 of what? The mass, which is grams, divided by what is the overall mass of our solution. And we're always going to refer it to as 100. And 100, if we're looking at mass, it, it, the mass units have to be in grams. So the answer in mass mass percent is 19.5 percent but in terms of a uh, like how much of this was present in 100 grams of the solution well it's 19.5 grams of it is going to be uh, dissolved in 100 grams of our entire solution. Concentration as a volume volume percent. A volume volume percent VV percent gives the volume of solid, solute 
divided by the volume of the solution expressed as a percent. You can almost imagine what the equation is going to be. Okay? Volume, volume, percent, or V, V, percent is equal to volume of the solute in milliliters, volume of the solution also in milliliters times 100. Sample problem. Rubbing alcohol is commonly used as an antiseptic for small cuts. It is sold as 70% volume volume solution of isopropyl alcohol in water. What volume of isopropyl alcohol is used to make 500 milliliters of rub rubbing alcohol? Okay, so take a moment. We have volume volume percent equals volume of solute divided by volume of solution times 100. So, what information are we given? We're given the percent. The percent, so we have 70%. Right? We have 70%. Are we given volume of the solute? No. No, we're given, so that's what we have to find, so x milliliters. Uh, we have the volume of solution? Yes. The volume of solution, 500 milliliters, and we have times the 100. So, we can kind of use now the ratio, okay? So, 70%, how, can, how else can I write 70%? Nope, I can write it as 0.7, yes, or 70 milliliters over 100 milliliters. Right? Because 70 divided by 100 is going to give me that point, right? And that's how we get the percent. So it's equal to x milliliters over 500 milliliters. So we want to isolate for x, and we bring the 500 over. So we get 70 milliliters times 500 milliliters divided by 100 milliliters is equal to x volume in milliliters. Okay, so milliliters cancel out. What is our unknown? 350 what? Milliliters. So we have 350 milliliters of the isopropyl alcohol because it's the isopropyl alcohol that is dissolved in water. Now, what are the least number of significant digits though? One. One. What is my answer though? Two. And that kind of answers that question. Right? So now we can either do we can either convert it into scientific notation, what we really don't need to, but our answer would be four hundred. Okay, so four hundred milliliters of isopropyl alcohol. So that's the solute. So that is how much we are going to dissolve in water, but in how much water? Well, we're looking at really for every 70 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol we're dissolving in for every 100 milliliters. Concentration in PPM and PPB. Concentration of a very small quantity of a substance in the environment or the human body can be expressed as parts per million or parts per billion. Okay, so parts per million, 10 to the power of 6. Parts per billion, 10 to the power of 9. Okay. And so we're going to use the following equation. For parts per million, mass of the solute in grams divided by the mass of the solution in grams. But we're not multiplying it by 100. We're multiplying it by 10 to the power of 6. Okay. So, if it was parts per billion, it's still going to be the mass of the solute divided by mass of the solution. It's going to be times 10 to the power of 9. Sample problem. Okay, sample problem. A fungus that grows on peanuts produces a deadly toxin when ingested in large amounts. 
This toxin destroys the liver and can cause cancer. Any shipment of peanuts that contains more than 25 parts per billion of this dangerous fungus, um, okay, is, is supposed to say is rejected. Uh, a company receives 20 tons of peanuts to make peanut butter. What is the maximum in grams of fungus that is allowed? So we start off with our equation and we're looking at parts per billion, okay? So P, P, B is equal to mass of solute in grams divided by the mass of solution in grams times, and because it's ten, uh, parts per billion, 10 to the power of 9. So, mass of the solute. We have the mass of solute? No, we don't. We don't have the mass per solute. So it contains more than, okay, so any shipment of peanuts that contains more than 25 parts per billion of this is dangerous. So what is the maximum amount parts per billion? 25 parts per billion. All right. So 25 parts per billion. Mass of the solute, that's what we need to find. So what is the solute? What does it represent? The, the fungus. The, fu the fungus. The solution is pretty much the peanuts, right? So now, 20 tons, one ton, okay, is equal to a thousand kilograms. One kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. So, um, the uh, volume of that is, so 20 tons is equal to, I kind of already did this, 2 times 10 to the power of 7 grams. Okay, so we have 2 times 10 to the power of 7 grams. And we're multiplying it by 10 to the power of 9. We want to isolate for x. Okay. So what we're going to do is, see this times 10 to the power of 9? What function are we doing to it now? We're dividing it when we bring it over to this side of the equal sign. So we have 25 parts per million divided by 10 to the power of 9 okay. is equal to x grams. What am I going to do with 2 times 10 to the power of 7? I'm going to bring it over, so I'm going to multiply it with my numerator. So it becomes 2 times 10 to the power of 7. Okay? And so this kind of represents the parts, oops, parts per billion. Okay, so we multiply those together. What do we get? 0 0.5 what? Grams. 0.5 grams. So when they're weighing out how much of the fungus is available, right? That's how little amount is accepted to reach that 25 parts per billion. In all that peanuts, 20 tons worth of peanuts, the fungus cannot be more than 0.5 grams. Molar concentration. Molar concentration is the number of moles of solute that can dissolve in one liter of solution. Molar concentration is often referred to as molarity. So keyword here is molarity. So in other words, this title could have been called molarity. So molarity is moles per liter solution. Okay, we haven't looked at moles, okay, in a while. We've been looking at mass, we're looking at volume, parts per million, parts per billion. Now we're actually going to revisit the, the, the number of moles. Okay. So remember the following pyramid. Molar mass is equal to mass over the number of moles. So that's going to be very important. 
So molarity, moles per liter, is equal to amount of solute in moles divided by volume of solution. Now, remember when we were looking at those concentrations, the concentration units were always in milliliters. Look at what the units are for volume, liters. So make sure you remember the differences. Another way to refer to this as a, in a simpler equation is concentration, okay, or molarity, C, is equal to the number of moles, okay, of our solute divided by the volume of the solution. Okay, that's the simpler way of rewriting the, uh, that equation. So let's look at the first sample problem. A saline solution contains 0 0.90 grams of sodium chloride, NaCl, dissolved in 100 milliliters of solution. What is the molar concentration of the solution? So we know that the molarity, okay, or the molar concentration, is equal to the number of moles divided by volume of the solution. Now, our number of moles... Do we have that? No, we have a PR table. We have a periodic table, right? So we can convert our mass into the number of moles. So what do we need to find? Molar mass of? NaCl. Okay. So due to time constraints, <laughs> 0 0.90 grams divided by the molar mass of NaCl is 58.44 grams per mole. Grams cancel out and we're given 1.54 times 10 power of negative 2 moles of NaCl. Okay. So we have that number of moles of NaCl uh, and that will be this. Our volume of the solution, 100 milliliters, but we can't just use that because we first need to convert it to liters. So 100 milliliters is equal to 0 0.1 liters. So we put that in there. So mol and molar concentration is 1.54 times 10 to the negative 2 moles divided by 0 0.1 liters. So when we divide the two, we get 0 0.15 moles per liter. But least number of significant digits in my question is 1. So my answer is 0 0.2 moles per liter. So 0 0.2 moles per liter is the molar concentration of the, the uh, saline solution. Last sample problem. At 20 degrees Celsius, a saturated solution of calcium sulfate CaSO4 has a concentration of 0 0.0153 moles per liter. A student takes 65 milliliters of the solution and evaporates it. What mass in grams is left over in the evaporating dish? All right. So molar concentration is equal to number of moles over volume. So 0 0.153 moles per liter is which one of those letters? The C, right? So we've got 0 0.0153 moles. Per liter equals. Do we have number of moles? No, we don't. So we don't have the number of moles. Do we have volume? Yeah. Yes, 65 milliliters. Can I just write that in? No, I got to convert that to liters, which is 0.065 liters. So we want to isolate for n the number of moles. And we bring this over, so we get 0 
0.0153 moles per liter times 0.065 liters. Liters cancel out. And I'm left with 9.94 times 10 to the power of negative 4 moles. So that's how many moles okay, uh, that I have that I've been able to extract from this, um, this solution. Now, I want to find the mass to do that. What do I do? Exactly. I, take my, I find my molar mass of calcium sulfate right, in solution. So we take the uh, molar mass calcium sulfate and we're going to multiply it by that. So molar mass The molar mass of calcium sulfate is 136.15 grams per mole. So we have 9.94 times 10 to the negative 4 moles. And we're going to multiply it by 136.15 grams per mole. Moles cancel out. And the volume that I'm, or sorry, the mass that I'm left with is 0 0.135 grams. But the least number of significant digits in my question is 2. So my answer is 0 0.14 grams is left over in my evaporating.